All right, so I'm reading, um, you heard it less than 15 minutes ago. I'm reading 1 John 4, 7 through 16 from the New Interpreter Study Bible. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed to us among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we were to love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that, that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify, I'm here to testify, that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in him. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. And as Gwaltney said, I've tried to do some new things, and I started uh, some spoken word, and that's what I have here for today. Society has taught me to know a name is to know everything. Given one name at birth, we're made into individuals. Knitted into a blanket, our name contains us. The teacher calls a name, you respond with here. Everyone ask your, everyone ask your name, but no one knows who you are. And then in marriage, names separate become unified under one. So names sit on billboards and stand on broken floors. Names walk on the road and drive on the sidewalk. Names kickstart empires and build revolutions. Yet we cash names in for we need to check in. A room held by a name is another dotted line signed, a log telling where a name has been. Keeps everyone accounted for, but books like tombstones display names. The resting place of those ideas that are existing and dead, bound together with excitement and dread, and I can't wait to be read. For my ideas to be said, a wealth of life invested into a few hundred pages. Some minutia, but mostly me. Since all I really needed was your presence. For no name is required to read this text. Though my personal funk may seem sacred, remember, I was once only a name to you. Probably recommended and internally debated. My name held weight, though my words were a mystery. Or perhaps I've drifted. Though our time together was short, thank you for your presence. I didn't know your name, but you knew me, and that is enough for us. And here, folks, is where I attempt to improvise, I suppose. God is love. And the only name I've ever needed to know is Yahweh. The only name I've ever needed to know is Jesus is love. I've only ever known truly that God is love, that I can trust that God is going to get me through the circumstances, get me onto that log to see where I've been, that God has brought me to a place where I can achieve something more and something greater for the kingdom of God that I've never done before. And as, as Brittany put earlier, the best way to do it is to tell a story. So I, I personally was saved in a Kroger parking lot with my dad, my biological dad, in, um, at seven years old, which means for six years, I had no idea who Jesus Christ was. And that's a long time for me. Um, and even more so, fast forwarding through life, um, I landed I landed at uh, Page High School, Page Middle School, somewhere um, in the middle of College Grove, Tennessee. And I didn't know, I didn't know God in a, well, I didn't know God personally. I didn't know him in a relationship. I knew him from going out on mission, on two mission trips to South Dakota when I saw his work with, with the people there when both feeding them and taking the time to play ball with them, 
dance with them, sing with them, and worship God with them. And though this may begin to be in a roundabout way, worshiping God um, is something that seems to always be the same wherever I am. That the presence of God is always in the same place um, and in the same manner. Or <laughs> it's as though that the presence of God is the same in a church in Tennessee or this church in Atlanta or um, the church in South Dakota that the presence of God is always so thriving and alive that it sticks inside of my heart and it brings me to recognize that there is something beyond just my own name, that there is a name greater than mine, that Yahweh is a name greater than mine. Elijah, from what I've been taught from the day I was, I guess I could understand things, Elijah means my God is Yahweh. And Yahweh is to be. Yahweh. I believe the, the um, Israelite transa translation, or the Greek, I don't know for sure, but Yahweh means to be. So my God is to be. Yahweh is to be. And he's, he's been through my life and within my life and all around my life since when I was in the womb, probably before that too, before I even was a name, before Elijah even came into being. I was someone, I was something, I was an object of love floating with God. Um, and then I was brought to this earth for six years. I didn't know about that. I didn't know that God had reached out to me, that God had chosen me, because there could have just as easily been someone else right here named Elijah that wasn't me, that wasn't as I was lived, as my life had been lived. And I might have dwelt through some hardship. I might have dwelt through financial hardship personally, my family. Um, and my mom knows this, that like, as soon as we went near verge of bankruptcy, it's like God seemed to send a check in the mail, whether it was a hundred dollars, 500 or 2000, that God seemed to have something for my family. And he's got something for y'all's too. And that is his love. That is his love undoubtedly, infinitely, recklessly, whatever the term you categorize as God's love. He has that love for you. He has that love that chose you from the beginning of time to the end of time to be with him in his kingdom he chose you without knowing your name he chose you without knowing where you'd be where you'd end up the next day but he knew he did know I suppose where you were gonna end up and that was at his side that was at his side that was in front of the cross he knew that you were coming to him, that you wanted to know him, that after a lifetime or a day, that you would at one moment get to know God. And whether that was just an action of his love or a voice of his love, you would hear it or interpret it in some way that would be meaningful to you. And that God would work in your life. So in marriage, names separate become unified under one God. Really, I thought of that today. Um, and that's, that's something that I'd love to do one day is marry, marry a woman. Um, but that's not guaranteed. And what is guaranteed is that I love God and God loves me. And that's what I'm thankful for. Um, so praise God and thank you.